to sharpen some knives. Let me just first say before I get started that um, I sharpen knives. I am not a knife sharpener, meaning I do not do this professionally. I have a whole other job. Um, I'm going to tell you this is unedited. Whatever we get, we get it together. If I mess up, then I'm just an idiot. Um, as I'm sharing this information with you, this is information from a guy who's done this for six years. I'll let you know that uh, before we even get started that I have a blown, blown, blown blood vessel in my eye and I have some sciatic nerve issues going on <laughs> and I even have some facial tics. So we'll get that out of the way right off the bat. My wife's doing laundry. It's okay. <coughs> and I have asthma. <coughs> um, so what we're going to talk about is, uh, like I said, I do not sharpen knives professionally, even though I sharpen other people's knives for money, to make money, to buy more knives. <coughs> I like my collection. I have a nice collection. <coughs> and um, a lot of you are already awesome knife sharpeners. What I noticed on the website or on our forum was that there are some knife sharpeners who are just not as good. And my goal is to get them to where I am. Um, in my six years, I've learned certain things, but people like Scott Gunn, who've been doing it 30 years, he knows a lot more than me. He has videos on YouTube. And um, so we're just gonna try to get you from where you are to where I am. <laughs> If you're past me, please teach me. If you're past me and you have comments, please make the comments, but be kind in the comments area. Um, remember that we all were beginners. Some of us still are. I'm still learning. So uh, to get started, let's talk about a couple of things. So I brought the very first knife that I sharpened ever. This is a $12 KitchenAid knife. I got it from TJ Maxx. If you actually look at it, I don't know if you can see it from there, but there are scuff marks all over it from where I was like pressing it into the stone. Um, my stepson has learned on this knife. I think my son has learned on this knife. This is a Shun Sora $80 VG Max. They'll say it's in their VG Max, VG 10. Oh, it's a VG 10. Actually, it's got a red rim on it. <clears throat> it's got an odd shaped belly. <clears throat> it's like flat right here, kind of flat there, but does have a little bit of a belly. Um, this was the first good knife that I ever learned to sharpen on. Um, people have problems with shuns. I've never got a chip or Nick in this one. So we're gonna work on that and see how sharp we can get it. <clears throat> we have a shake, Shakey Plusa. Um, it is, all, all of these knives are sharp. So it seems ridiculous that I'm gonna sharpen them. <clears throat> but I think most of us can get a knife sharp. We're just gonna get it sharper than it is. So um, we're gonna show off a couple of knives. So this is, an Anru, it could be pronounced differently. I'd love to hear it pronounced differently. I'm calling it an Anru. Um, so these are both um, super blue. Uh, they're AS. So I know some of you guys will argue that it shouldn't be, but if you're on the website that I got it from and you know that shit changes metals all the time, it's a mystery. This is super blue. <coughs> This is a uh, Kurosaki, also super blue. Um, you have seen me use these knives. I've gotten these like really ridiculously sharp uh, tree topping and whatever. And so that's our goal. So we're gonna talk about sharpening and then we're gonna talk about uh, the different metals and things and what we're going for, deburring and then edge leading versus edge forwarding forward. We, got, we will have a leather strop out as well. Um, so let's talk about the equipment that we're going to use. 
So <clears throat> we have a Shapton 220. We're not, we don't need it for what we're doing. Um, for those of you who are using a 220, 220 grit is a very low grit. Uh, this particular one by Shafton, I've heard people mention and it's absolutely true. It dishes out. You can see that there's a curve to it. <clears throat> um, I do flatten it out occasionally. <laughs> this one will be replaced not too long because it's definitely getting thin. <laughs> when I'm using a 220 grit, you have given me a, a knife that is basically a blank piece of metal. Uh, maybe it used to be a knife. I wouldn't call it a knife anymore. Um, so, sorry it's late here. I've had a long day. <laughs> I just wanted to get this done because it's the, one of the few times that I can get this done. Um, then we're going to go to the 400. <laughs> if I'm using a 400, chances are you were a knife and you weren't used down to where you're like sharp but kind of dull. You're dull but you're a knife. You're a dull knife, you know, so I might go to my 400. <laughs> and then a thousand is for me, it's maintenance. So if I'm putting you on the 1000, you're just not sharp. I mean, sharp is relative to each person. <laughs> uh, I'm not polishing you when I'm using 1000. I am removing metal and I'm trying to change the edge. So typically I would start at the 1000. Um, what else do we have since we <clears throat> since we are going to be working with some other things? We have in the water down here. We have a soaking stone. This is a super stone by Nanawa, and it is a three thousand six thousand. <laughs> uh, we'll discuss the soaking stone shortly. Um, after that, we have the Sahiro eight K. Now, with us, we have some Japanese stones. I am only gonna be pulling out one that I know of, which is gonna be one I still haven't used yet. That's gonna be the Nakayama. Okay, so I will literally use it for the first time in front of you. <laughs> It'll be fun, but its projection should be around 10K. <laughs> I tend to use my natural stones on my Japanese knives call it romantic. The, the lore is it's supposed to be better. So we have the Azu. This is around 3000. Um, this is the first time I ever put a knife on a, a natural stone and knew that you could actually sharpen and take metal. I discussed it in a different video. <coughs> so um, I shouldn't need it tonight. <coughs> but we have the Amakusa, which is supposed to be around 600. I think it's around 1500. <laughs> I think that because they're natural, they could come in like all over the place. But we have the Azu, and then we have <coughs> the Moriyama. Okay, so this would be like 6,000. So this would be, you know, in between here. <coughs> So for the purposes of like this knife is sharp. So let me just go ahead and show you what sharp is to me, like what already sharp is, and then we'll see if we can get it to the next place. <clears throat> All right, so we have some paper. <clears throat> and some paper towels. <clears throat> All right, so let's see what we can do with this. It's got a little graininess to it. Oh, that's not really real. So this knife was sharpened by my stepson on his very first sharpening. <clears throat> so let's see if it will cut a paper towel. So it's this inexpensive metal, $12. Cut the paper. It did not cut a paper towel. Let's go to like an expensive knife for a second, like this one, and just, just to see if it will do it. Okay, so, you know, so we'll talk about that for a second. <clears throat> so let's talk about 
the different metals because you guys are going to be sharpening and we're going to go over sharpening i'm not trying to delay <clears throat> so in the world of objects if you and i had a knife made out of styrofoam probably wouldn't be that sharp <clears throat> if we had another knife and it was made out of wood i'm sure we could get the knife made out of wood sharper than the one <clears throat> made out of styrofoam if we had a knife made out of hard plastic, like a very hard plastic, we might be able to get that knife sharper than the wood, and then we have metal. Well, within the grains of metal, you have those differences as well. And so, very inexpensive metal got paper cutting. You could definitely hurt yourself and take someone's limb off with this knife. But it's like, do you need it to be paper towel cutting sharp? <laughs> so the goal is to get you from where you are to the next level and then if you don't know anything about sharpening <coughs> you should learn it here <coughs> so we have different knives they all have different purposes <coughs> so this particular knife this santoku it's a little thicker behind the spine which means that the metal itself is thicker behind the edge and then it still has super blue steel <coughs> Not to be confused with how completely crazy thin this Kurosaki is. So this Bunka is technically the same exact functioning knife as this and they have the same exact metal. This is iron clad. This is a stainless clad. <coughs> it's just thinner. <coughs> now, I didn't make my knives thinner and on the subject of making knives thinner, I don't do that. Um, your knife came at a certain thickness and that knife has a purpose So if you go changing the thicknesses Then you've changed this purpose with that being said if it's your knife You can do whatever the hell you want to do with it because once you bought it it's yours <laughs> But if you were sharpening knives for other people Then you need to understand that they bought a knife whether they have any knowledge of knives or not they bought a knife to use for whatever purpose, be it hunting or fillet or like whatever. And it's not really up for you to decide to make it something new out of it. If it came with a 50-50 bevel, a 70-30, if it came single bevel, if it came convex, um, those are things you need to know. Now, <clears throat> we're not teaching convex tonight. We're not teaching recurve. We're not teaching serrated. <clears throat> we're not teaching hunting. We're teaching kitchen knives. That's what we're doing tonight. <coughs> Let's just, you know, get that out of the way. I'm not, this is already going to be long anyway. We don't need to make it longer. Um, if you didn't know what any of the things were that I just said, then you definitely need to look those up and understand that I have sharpened recurves for people that take some other equipment, serrated edges. I don't do for anybody. I don't, it's monotonous. I don't want to do it. <coughs> um, I've sharpened hunting knives for people stuff. I only learned recently what a convex knife was. It has its place in the world and you can look that up. There are videos on YouTube on how to sharpen. That's a unique thing. And so even Scott Gunn, who's a member of the team could talk about how to do that. He just wrote a long dissertation on somebody's post explaining to them, you know, because they messed up on a convex knife. Now that I know it's there, you know, you can't just go put your 50-50 bevel on every single knife, but, um, but I pretty much can on my kitchen knives. So I'm kind of happy about that. <clears throat> so let me show you guys a couple of things that we're also going to talk about as well. <clears throat> I printed some pictures that I want to show you. Um, we're also go we're going to be sharpening a knife a second, and you're going to see me doing edge trailing um, strokes, but you're going to see edge leading. I want you to understand the difference when you use it, why you use it, why you should use it. <coughs> so, <coughs> so we have um, some pictures here, <coughs> which is going to be your edge. Let me do it. Did I get three, four? <coughs> well, do I have one more? told you this was going to be <clears throat> so 
This is edge um, trailer. Okay, so it looks pretty good. Okay, but let's compare that. Oh. Special effects problem, folks. We have edge leading versus edge trailing. This is edge leading. Okay, that's at 1600 times. Edge trailing. <clears throat> so obviously edge leading is like a thing, <clears throat> you know? And we need to know, let me see if I can adjust this. Focus here real quick. Oh yeah. <clears throat> I also made sure to get different knives out to show you different profiles. So this one is I've got a, a constant belly. So this is my cheap knife. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna use an already sharp knife for the purposes of this, but we're gonna see if we can get it sharper. <clears throat> okay, so we need a little bit of water on the stone. Now, you're gonna see a lot of people talking about this kind of differently. One of the things you're gonna see is I'm just dipping some water. <laughs> this water's gonna get murky. I'm gonna have to get some new, some, some new water. If you, I don't have a mister. I, I had a bottle set aside, it got thrown away, whatever. <laughs> if you have a mister, or if you have a bottle that you use for like um, sauces in your restaurant, I suggest it. So let's go over pan. I, you know, I feel stupid doing this because you guys are on night forums. So it seems like you would just know this already. There are plenty of, of knives videos out there. Ricky has done a million. I'm not trying to replace Ricky or be Ricky. I'm hoping that maybe I say one or two things that he doesn't and then it clicks for you. Maybe my verbiage is just a little bit different. So, so here we are. Um, I have my hand way up on the blade. I like my finger down the back. <laughs> Whatever you need to keep it steady. Um, when I put this down, if you guys don't know what your angle is, <clears throat> you'll hear Ricky say that you should like move this around until you're moving it back and forth and you feel it, you keep, you keep making it flatter until it slips. And if it slips, it's too flat. And when you come up enough that it's catching, then you've got it. I mean, I've got my angle that I'm used to. <laughs> I have done everything from put a matchbook underneath. When you put a matchbook underneath or three pennies, it gives you an angle. If you are not good at math and you don't know that this is 90, so then when you go half of that would be 45, half of that is 22, you've got to find out your 16 degree. I think it's something that after six years, I don't really think much about it. This has a rounded belly. so. A lot of you guys out there who are watching knife videos, you're gonna see straight back and forth. <clears throat> um, that is fine on like straighter edged knives. <clears throat> uh, what I have found that people do not consider, this is maybe one of the things that I haven't seen in the video. <clears throat> if, I, if my knife is 45 degrees to the stone and I push forward, <clears throat> the grain of the knife is gonna come diagonally down. And you just saw the pictures of the teeth. <clears throat> you know, <laughs> you're making, you're making groups. <clears throat> so at, the, at a microscopic level, if there's these little tiny dimples on here, conicals or whatever particles that are sticking up and they're rounded and they make a form of sandpaper <clears throat> um, you're making ditches in your metal and you're hoping that if you rub back and forth enough 
that the dishes, like you make an initial ditch and another one and you keep kind of flattening the dishes and then you're making new metal. So you need to kind of go back and forth <coughs> um, knowing that you're going to be putting these dishes in here. Now, I am going to, I think my stepdaughter might be, are you awake, Chloe? <coughs> so we're just keep going, guys. So I'm actually got a, like a curving motion. <coughs> I've got my 16 degrees, but I am, how do you describe that? You know, I'm here, I'm making a video for the first time on sharpening. How do you describe these words? <coughs> I've got my angle. This arm is like rigid. I am um, a very aware of like the knife's edge. My fingers are on the tip. They are not on the blade itself because if I catch or pull into me, I'm gonna pinch my skin and cut myself. I'm not saying I'm not gonna cut myself tonight. Um, if I get too high on the stone, if you look at this knife and you see like all the little scratch marks that are way up in the middle, <clears throat> um, it's because maybe the fingers were a little bit too high and I ended up flexing the knife and pushing it onto the stone, causing a scar. I mean, six years ago, this knife, it took a beating. <clears throat> so, and, and everyone's learned on it. So as we move it back and forth, I, I have to count like how many times I went back and forth in an area, then move my fingers and I'm gonna count the same amount of strokes per that area and then I'm gonna do it again and again. And in doing this, when I've done the entire length of the knife, that's technically one stroke. <clears throat> this becomes important later when you flip it over because what is our goal, guys? Our goal is that we are going to take a piece of metal, it's got a rounded, and we're gonna make it into a new triangle. And when we do, there's gonna be some metal that flips over, and then it's gonna, we're gonna turn the knife over and sharpen, and it's gonna flip over again. And so for those of you who don't know, who are new, who just signed up on the form, <coughs> got a stone, whatever. So we call the piece of metal that we're trying to make a burr. <coughs> so it's literally, we're going to be shaving metal off of one side, shaving metal off on the other side. We'll be left with a brand new triangle. But in the end, there's gonna be a piece of metal wire. Now let's imagine <coughs> that we took a piece of wood and you sat on it and I drug you. That wood would just be sanded on the sidewalk or on the asphalt and the asphalt's got nodules on it and so does the, the, the sidewalk. And as that wood is scraping, wood is scraping through the bottom and giving it an edge, but you know that you would see like wooden phrase sticking off the bottom of the wood and that would be our burr. So when you turn the knife over, you're going to sharpen the other side and the burr itself is going to flip over. Now it's going to happen a lot faster on the second side because if you've ever taken a wire hanger and you like take the wire hanger and then wiggle it back and forth, the first one's kind of hard and then the, it's a little easier and then easier, easier and it snaps. <laughs> So as you do stone progression and you get a burr, the burr is going to wiggle itself off. But another thing is it's gonna happen faster, so you should expect it faster, which then lies another issue, which is if you've done like, and we talked about counting strokes, if you've done X amount of strokes on this side, like so that's one, two, three, 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 and that's one. And then you know, let's say you do 20 of them. <laughs> and you go to the other side and you get the burr flipped over in 10. Well, and a little bit of an issue you're gonna have is your knife is no longer 50-50. <laughs> because you have definitely sanded a hell of a lot more metal off of one side than you did the other. Now you have an edge and your edge is shifted because this side of the knife is gonna be like 70 or the other side is gonna be 30 or 60-40. <laughs> And that may not matter in performance as far as like you using the knife, being right-handed. But if your goal is a 50-50 bevel, 
you definitely need to put the same amount of work in on the other side of the knife as you did on this side of the knife. <clears throat> so, um, I'm, and when I do this, I don't like stop all the time and then count. Because when you see me do it, now this knife has a big as hell bolster on it. I can't stand it. <laughs> I know a lot of you guys can't stand it, but if we're sharpening knives for other people, we get a bolster. What I'm gonna tell you to do for me, I'm able to get to the corner of that still doing this. You might go completely across, and then when we go edge leading, you know, you can miss the bolster as well. But um, I'm able to get the knife, you know, right, if you can see it, like, and still get out of the bolster. And I'm really, really bad about making sure that the, the tip is equally sharp as the heel, and I'm really kind of OCD about making sure that the heel is every bit as sharp as the knife. People are very um, lazy when it comes to doing all the work. <clears throat> The owner of the knife that you're sharpening might not even expect that area, but um, it's very impressive that you give them back their knife and it's crazy sharp even just at the very edge. And we all know that we do the edge for a very little thing. So, um, so as I'm doing this, how much pressure do I have? That's a really good argument. Um, so Ricky on his videos will tell you the weight of your hand. I don't disagree with him, but I definitely have used more pressure. <clears throat> um, so let's talk about um, <laughs> when to do more. We all get very tired, especially if you're doing a lot of knives. We get very lazy <clears throat> and um, we just want it done. You know, at first you're all excited, it's all exciting and new, but you just want it done. So you definitely might drop below your 1,000 and go to your 400 or 220, but you're destroying a knife if you're using like something too low for something that's unnecessary because you are removing metal that cannot be replaced by the knife. And so if you respect the knife, if you have any type of um, affinity for a knife, or like whatever, don't do extra grinding just because you're tired. Go to sleep, wake up, do it again the next day. Um, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> um, I, I lost the train of thought again. This is not going to be edited, so I'm just saying stuff, you know, as it pops up. <clears throat> so, so my fingers are near the edge. Um, I am rounded here. My goal is to not make a flat spot, <clears throat> okay? My goal is to keep a continuous flow. <clears throat> so uh, I think there's a member of the, of the forum, her name is Renee. She had a question, um, and so a lot of people might have this. When you start to use this stone and metal comes off the knife, you will have a residual, which some people call a slurry or mud, and when metal particles come off the knife and they get on the stone itself, the actual particles for a, a brief period will help you in sharpening the knife. <laughs> um, this is gonna vary per stone because when you start polishing, which I am not a knife polisher, there are other people that are knife polishers, I am not qualified to speak on polishing. <laughs> I can make the edges of my knife shiny, but um, I am not a knife polisher. Make that really clear. So, <clears throat> Whenever you are getting some slurry, it's being helpful. Whenever you get too much slurry, it clogs down the actual stone, and then you notice it doesn't seem to cut at all. The how fast that happens is different per stone. So when people are telling you their favorite stones, whether it's Sahiro, which I have come to love after using 8,000, I have not used the 1,000 Sahiro. I'm super excited about purchasing one. <clears throat> um, I started, with soaking stones, I had a 400, 1,000. I gave it to a friend because I've just moved on to splashing goes. But, um, but yeah, I mean, when you see me use this a little bit, it loads really fast. I have to use a rust eraser or something to clean it constantly. Um, so when I'm polishing, it just seems like that's a constant nuisance. So, 
Just wanted you to know what a slurry was. Um, it's a little bit different with a Japanese stone. A Japanese stone, you need a slurry. You have to create your own slurry uh, with lower grit stones. And it's just a separate topic. Even though I'm gonna post this in the natural stone area, this is about shopping, I mean, I'm sharpening. Um, those of you who have natural stones already know and can better explain, but my 6,000 Moriyama gets its own slurry. I do nothing. I do not create anything. I put the knife on it, it happens. This Azu, if I don't put a slurry on it, I can waste the next hour of my life in it. I mean, eventually it will make its own slurry, but if you have one and you need to create a slurry, they have these. Now this is a replacement plate because everybody knows I was a dumbass and didn't get the whole thing. I'll buy the other one or glue it to some wood. But this 400 Atoma rubbed on the stone makes the stone get a slurry quick and then it does its job. When you get to the harder stones like the Nakayama, you don't need a slurry, you want it hard. This is another Nakayama just sitting there. Some rusty racers, handy for me. So let's sharpen the knife. I have said a lot. Um, so you're gonna see me just use everything. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do X amount of passes on this knife. Again, the knife was already sharp. I am feeling my thumb on top going this direction and I'm feeling for a piece of metal to be sticking up. <laughs> so let's talk about the burr. Um, different stones, different knives can take a long time or very little. If you're using super blue, which all those other knives are made out of, it does not take very long. It gets an amazing edge, it holds its edge, but you can just, you look like a genius because you sharpened it like super bad. <clears throat> this shitty knife takes like a while. So I said, said earlier, I would be doing some edge leading strokes. I only do the edge leading strokes on the last stones. Um, right now I'm just removing metal. So for those of you who don't know what that means with edge leading, edge trailer. So currently the edge is facing me <laughs> and I am pushing the knife forward with pressure. Um, you can, your pressure can be as light as resting your hand, or it can be as much as five pounds and more pressure. Um, to actually learn your pressure, if you will take a scale and take the knife, like pretend this is a scale, and put your knife on the scale and press until you see five pounds, don't put your hand on the scale, put your knife on the scale and press. <laughs> and then when you see five pounds, you know, like that's how much pressure <clears throat> five pounds can feel like. Um, you, I tend to, and this is me, you guys can correct me. I tend to have to kind of raise the hand up a little bit to get to the tip, but I'm looking at it, I'm making eye contact, I'm making sure that the back of the knife itself is at that 15 degrees. When you get to know your manufacturers, you'll know that like Shun is 16 and Wustoff and Hinkle are 22, and they can go down to 20. <laughs> um, so you can look those up if you want to. Uh, I like my knife sharp, so I mean, I'm a 15 degree person. So I was watching a video on Japanese knife imports, <clears throat> and uh, he was talking about uh, edge leading, which is me taking the blade, pointing towards you, and it, you think I'm, like, I'm trying to cut the stone, I'm not. If I go up really too hard, I, I will cut the stone, dull my knife, ruin my stone. So you still need to make sure you have your like 15 degrees or whatever degree you're working at. <clears throat> but you would go towards you. Now again, even you're like pushing metal, so it actually, it still gets the burr on the same side, oddly enough. <clears throat> um, it's still going to push metal upward. <clears throat> so I tend to only do edge leading on the like 6,000, 8,000, 10,000. I just wanna make sure at the very end that I push those little fringy tethered pieces down. 
I don't. I'm not boring you. I'm not boring you. So when I get to the flatter part of the knife, if I want to go straight back and forth, I can. And if how like far that angle, I mean, it's not wrong to be more across. It's not wrong to be here. Different case if you're using a single bevel knife, we will not be covering that today. <clears throat> I have them, we're just not talking about <clears throat> different stuff going on. So I'm pushing, letting my fingers ride back. Pushing, letting my fingers ride back. Can you go back and forth? You can. Uh, don't fight me on this. You don't have to, you don't have to listen to me. When I watched Japanese knife imports and he was sharpening, he did it. He goes, why the hell would I waste my time when you can have edge forward and edge trail at the, on the same thing. So as far as like going forward and pushing back, there is danger in pushing back. If you're doing edge leading towards yourself um, and your finger gets caught, I've done it. You can cut yourself. If your angle's wrong, you'll cut your stump. You can also dull your knife. But if you practice and you go pushing forward, you can push backwards. Um, nothing wrong with it. Your goal is to get a burr. You don't want to waste your whole life like doing it. Now, what's my expectations of this knife? <laughs> Well, we already sharpened, I mean, it was already sharp <clears throat> earlier. Can I cut a paper towel with this? I mean, would I like to? Sure. <clears throat> but I don't really know that I should be able to cut a paper towel with kind of like a piece of shit metal. My wife likes this knife. It's a sharp knife. It's not ridiculous. It won't cut the space kind of continuum. Um, it'll cut cheese. It'll cut salads. She feels a little safer. My pressure's pretty light. I mean, honestly, if I wanted to really get a burn on this, I could have just jumped down to 400 or whatever. Oh, we're there. Oh, perfect. Okay, so we don't have as much as a burr here. So we're gonna focus on the back side. I mean, on the, the down part. So I'm pushing. Riding back, pushing, riding back, pushing. Okay, nice. I mean, okay, what do we don't want to have happen? I don't want the burr at the bottom to be bigger than the burr at the top. I will have removed too much metal and I will change the profile of the knife. There, it is nice. That is like, so here's the thing. You guys have seen the method where you keep the knife in the same hand and you go towards yourself and position your body and you kind of come towards yourself. Well, you can watch another video for Ricky for that. I'm going to tell you, take the time. Love hands. <clears throat> That's me. Sorry. I did it the other way forever. My first four years. I took a time out of my day on this knife to learn how to do this. Um, yes, it feels weird. When you first start, get over it. Use a cheap knife. Practice. You notice that I didn't put my finger down the spine on this side. Yes, you can have a different style on this side. One of the ways that you can make sure that your knife is 50-50 is the, uh, I'm not gonna say it's completely accurate, but is the beveled edge thickness the same as the other? Now, for the record, this is done. It, I mean, what a difference from one side to the other. Now, does that mean without me having a microscope? I mean, Scott Gunn's got a microscope. Maybe he checks all of his. <coughs> um, 
But you and I know that I did not wear the same amount of metal off on this side as I did the other side. So I've already got the bird to flip over, do I keep going? So that's a question that you need to ask yourself. Um, if I keep going for the same amount of time, the bird will still be there, it won't go anywhere. Um, but I will have like worked on the metal on the backside, which means I have a better opportunity of being a truly 50-50. Okay, so we formed this bevel. We have done what, yeah, hold on, this nice. So we've done what we wanted to do to make this knife, like, good. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> let's talk about the bevel for a second. <clears throat> so first of all, we need this bevel. So the bevel is like that edge, right? I mean, it's just a little, thing is sticking over, we have flipped it back and forth, and we need to rip it off. <clears throat> now, if we go to the next stone, we will flip it back and forth some more, and then the next one back and forth some more, and eventually you might hope that it actually comes off, <clears throat> um, but you can just get it off if you want to. <clears throat> now, I, since I'm going to do a progression stone, <laughs> I don't have to be so aggressive to get it off, but let's say you have a 1,000. You just have the 1,000. Then if you do an edge, some edge leading strokes, you're gonna not only get rid of the bevel, you're gonna like make those edges cleaner like in the pictures I showed you. <clears throat> and so we can do some, and if you don't have leather, we can do some stropping like right here. <clears throat> um, so I've got the knife set down and I'm gonna put it back at the exact same angle and the pressure is the weight of my hand, and I'm doing a continuous stroke. You can see, I don't know if you can see the mud, I mean, there's like mud on this thing. <clears throat> so, if I, uh, if I just had the 1000, I would go toward you, then I would turn the knife towards me, put my hand, pull it towards myself, and I would do this, to clean up the jagged edge. And here's the thing, it's the weight of my hand. How many times do you need to do it? How long do you have? I mean, is 20 better than 10? Sure. Is 30 better than 20? Pretty sure. Um, could you just get away with 20? When you go to cut something, you'll know. Uh, again, quality of the knife, quality of the stone, quality of the person doing it. <clears throat> um, so if all we did was that, uh, that's funny, right? Because the knife was already sharp. Let's see what'll happen. <clears throat> Cut it, but it kind of tore it. Let's get the water off of here. <clears throat> so there's my cut from earlier. So let's do it right beside that. It did a little cut. It did a little bit of tear and a little bit of cut and it stopped. It did, it did a little bit. So that was like shitty knife on 1000 edge leading <coughs> all right so uh let's see if we can get this knife better <coughs> so we're gonna move the 1000 i am not leaving it in the water i'm just getting all the mud off of it so it doesn't harden <coughs> and create a problem for later So we have paper towels handy, so let's use them. <coughs> and we'll let that sit there. <coughs> All right, so should I go to the 3000? <coughs> Asthma. <coughs> so you can see this load. <coughs> so we're going to do, remember we did one side, then the other. We're going back. <coughs> now technically, 
burr isn't like, you know, because we did edge leading. So <clears throat> let's do this like we're trying to get a burr. And you already see the lines that are in there. <clears throat> so if there was any burr, <clears throat> it's coming off. It slides nice though, I'll tell you that. Like, I'm, I'm, no, I'm more of a splash and go person. <clears throat> Um, I think Ricky said that the 3000 is like his favorite, you know, it's like the 800, 3000. It, it does slide. It's got a chewy kind of a feel to it. It's got, I don't even, if you felt it, you know, <clears throat> um, it's softer than the heart of the stones or whatever, but. <sighs> so obviously with a 3000 grit stone, let's talk about like what's happening to the side of the knife. What's the advantage and what's the disadvantage of going on? <clears throat> so I need you to imagine that we have made a new triangle on the thousand because we, we have, <clears throat> and that the 1000 grit has like little circles on it, like little tennis balls sticking up. <clears throat> and so the side of your knife now is actually like the skin of an orange or skin of the lemon. I mean, you've made a triangle but it's not smooth. <clears throat> um, going to the 3000 won't really change the shape of your triangle, but if it's a bumpy area right here, <clears throat> think about that like cutting through things and that there's drag and there's some advantages and disadvantages. If I was cutting something like a paper towel, <clears throat> you might want something toothy in which the actual edge of the knife still has teeth edge leading uh, can take away the teeth. Uh, so we can find out in a minute for, through doing it, did edge leading help um, if maybe a bitey knife isn't so good. But you can definitely imagine cutting certain materials, uh, how having a really smooth edge versus, an, like if I'm cutting something wet, like a lemon or an orange where the knife will just slide through, I probably want the surface as clean as I can possibly get it. The other thing is, if you've made a triangle and the surface is raised because it has grooves, your triangle's um, actual distance is more like this, right? Because it, there's still material on the outside. So you're not really as lean as say this triangle because the material's sticking up and with grooves, it's a little wider. So if we can rub the material, um, <coughs> sorry, uh, off, <coughs> then, then we can make the knife technically more narrow. Now, it makes sense that if it's really smooth, there would actually be more surface area touching the food as it pulls through, which will change your knife feel. More surface area tends to make more drag. So even though we've made the knife more narrow, <coughs> I'm not exactly sure um, if we've helped. Again, I think it has to do with the knife's purpose and the food you're using. Also, the quality of the outside of the knife's uh, edges has a lot to do with the quality of the steel. Because if people start studying metallurgy, they realize that the molecular structure of the knife creates a certain graininess, and that graininess <laughs> is actually going to um, change the way that the grooves themselves appear on the side of the knife. <clears throat> I know this, this video is long, but <clears throat> um, just work with me here. So technically right now, as we're polishing, we're making the knife really smooth. I don't need a bevel, but let's say there was a bevel and let's say it didn't fall off. <clears throat> that would mean a piece of metal that's flipped back and forth. We at least need to either rip it off or get it straight. So if we had a piece of metal on the end and we got it straight, we would have a foil edge and we would cut with it. <clears throat> Um, so if I grab a block of cheese and I go to cut the block of cheese into a new triangle, like a knife's edge, and I left a little clump of cheese down the middle so it was more blunt and not a point, <clears throat> and we call that the burr. So we have a triangle with like a long um, rectangular piece going down the edge, and then we took our hand and we broke it off, like breaking off the burr. Would we have a perfect triangle? And you know that we would not, 
because when the cheese broke off, there would be like jagged edges where the cheese broke. <clears throat> so when you go to take the burr off, you still have where the burr came off, you have toothy edges. And so you actually have to get the burr off and then you need to go back on like an 8,000 or something, even a, a three or six, but you need to go back on something and now work on reforming the triangle. And that would be a good time to do your edge leading strokes. <clears throat> so as this stone has started to load up, the knife tends to like slide over the stone and it feels like it's doing not a damn thing. <clears throat> so this black stuff needs to come off. So I'm using a rusty razor. So I didn't like get rid of the slurry completely, but the stone is clean. So let's imagine that my pressure right now is either the, the slur, either the burr is falling off, which seems kind of evident from the amount of metal that's on a 3000. <clears throat> so you can see the stone is starting to load up again. So I pretty much don't think that I'm trying to get a burr. I think I'm trying to like polish the knife. One of the things I'm always proud of, and I know you can't really see it from there, <clears throat> I don't know if you can see it, but the actual edge is even. And I think that takes a little practice that the width of the bevel is the same. There's not one wide point anywhere. <clears throat> so yeah, obviously if you change your angle here, here, and here, you're going to have a much wider bevel in different places. So learning to get your hand like just level, this just sits there. Like it's almost like it can't even deviate anymore. I am looking at the knife's contact. I am looking at my hand. I'm not just like over here, hey honey, like whatever. Um, so the stone's loaded up. So I'm gonna flip it. Because <clears throat> again, we're like polishing. There wasn't really a big bevel to take off because I did the edge leading. Had I not done the edge leading strokes at the 1000 spot, I would have had more of a bevel to flip back and forth. And remember this rocking motion is because the knife has a belly. So um, the stone starting to load up again. I don't mind the load. There comes a point that it's it starts to be counterproductive. That is for you to decide. The load happens differently on stones. Um, different stones, different manufacturers, different grits. Um, so you, when you talk to people, they might say it loads fast. It's relative to them. Loads faster or here. You know what I mean? I'm not saying not to listen to them. I'm saying that. What's fast to me, it might not be fast to you. So, okay, so, um, the nice thing is, again, it's just consistent. I mean, the actual edge on both sides, it's just so clean. And just so all the way down. I mean, of course, it's ridiculous right now in the world of like clients. I mean, this knife has been done. Here you go. Have a nice day. I do not need you tree topping stuff. Like, whatever. <clears throat> so let's just see like where we got it now. 
get some water off the knife. I mean, it's pretty to look at. Okay, again, shitty knife. So what I want to do is I'm going to go a little bit further. I'm not going to do all the stalking, but um, I'm going to make sure the burr is gone. So if you have a piece of cardboard, you can do this. I actually use the wooden thing, the, the bridge. So I lay, take the knife and I simply lay it down under its own weight and I drag the knife across. And I did a pretty good job because normally it'd be like a bit of metal. So I've already gotten rid of the burr as far as that goes. <clears throat> so what are we going to do? Are we going to go to the 5,000 or the 6? So I mean, I have a 5,000, I have a 6, I have an 8. <clears throat> so let's just jump to the 6. So I just flipped the stone over and there's slurry on it, which means the slurry came from the 3,000. Do not let 3,000 grit slurry be on your 6,000 side <laughs> because then the particles are still doing the three. You don't want it to interfere. So we get it nice and clean. Now, I want you to see how fast that puppy loaded up. <clears throat> You know, on the subject of using your stones, <laughs> if you want your stone to stay like flat, use the whole damn stone. <clears throat> so if you're just here, no. Like you really have to learn to actually and go to the right side and the left side and the corner. But I mean, that load should be on the whole block. Now again, we tried to cut paper towel. We didn't put it on leather. We didn't do more edge leading strokes. So we're gonna do more edge leading shortly. I'm gonna put this knife through everything that I have, including the Nakayama, and we're going to get the knife, this crappy metal, to the best of its ability. So Scott Gunn today, if you don't know who he is, he's a member of a lot of the forums. <coughs> um, Scott's last name is G-U-N-N. -N. I'm sorry that I'm singling you out, sir. Uh, 30 years of doing this, he specializes in certain things. He likes knives with a lot of palladium. <coughs> um, so different, different elements, different things make knives made out of, you know, they make that, make that molecular structure different. <coughs> And so things that stain less tend to not sharpen as much. That's a general statement, guys. So everybody's going to jump on me. Um, in the world of knives, without getting super detailed, white number one gets the sharpest. Uh, super blue, to me, is second sharpest. Close to that is ZDP-189, which is a stainless. <coughs> um, ZDP-189 is so hard that it's actually hard to sharpen on a stone, you need special stones and extra time. Um, HAP 40 is right there with ZDP 189. But uh, white number one, blue, super blue, blue number two, white number two, certain order. They're easy to sharpen, get the best edges. <clears throat> so don't compare your knife sharpening to another guy who might have higher quality stones, more years of experience and better steel. <clears throat> Scott tends to um, specialize in certain knives, whether it's expensive pocket knives that nobody ever takes out of their safe, except for the show, or people who actually use the knives. Um, I'm sure he can do con convex blades, which means that the actual blade is thick and it rounds at the last second. 
And if you keep putting your straight V on it, you're gonna take the convex off of it. I do not sharpen those knives. I'm sure I've had them and probably accidentally made them into perfect Vs. You're not the only one. You get used to moving your fingers down the, and you get used to seeming seamless. Like my fingers are walking up and down the whole thing, but it's not wrong to be one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Clean my stone. So we're on the 6,000. In a minute, we'll do a tomato test to see can we cut a tomato with a $12 knife and shitty steel by using all these stones a good technique. So that loaded up again. Do not go like that and cut yourself. It's easy to do. I mean, I'm just, I'm sorry guys. Like I gotta show you. <clears throat> And we talked about the edge earlier, like, but even the edge on this side, can I even get it? Like, you can see that it's polished, you know? And it's consistent. I mean, literally, the thickness of the edge here and the thickness of the edge here, I'm sorry I cannot seem to catch the light in, in a way. But yeah, it's the same. For you guys who are wondering how do you fix all the scratches on here, sandpaper. <clears throat> um, that's a separate video. <clears throat> Maybe one day I'll sand this knife and try to get all of those scratches off for you. <clears throat> so we have done the 6,000. So I tell you what, we're gonna go to eight, but we're not gonna get off the eight before we do edge bleeding strokes. So again, pushing forward, pulling towards myself, What's nice is, if there's any type of burr that you've created, you literally see the medical part. They're, they're like, there's two lines. There's a line here and a line there that shows me like metal still coming off the edge. Make sure your pressure is the same all the way across. I did a lot of talking and a whole lot of not a lot of knife sharpening. Apologize, there was a lot to talk about. So we did some strokes. So let's clean this off because we're gonna put this stone away. We don't want it to dry with the load up on the... <clears throat> You might have said, like, Greg, you could have used the Japanese stones. Well, I mean, I could have. They're like the same. I just, uh, I'm picky. Sorry, I don't, um, I don't do that. So let me adjust this for this stone. Okay. Now, this particular splash and go, it actually has to soak. And I'm an idiot because I should have had it soaking for, like, 10 minutes. Um, I did not know that when I bought that. Uh, I had to read some other people. It's got a stickiness to it, like at the beginning. And uh, I love it. Trust me, the Suhiro AK is like premium. I mean, super, super, super love the stone. But at first, I had trouble using it because I was like, what the hell? And then when it finally seemed like it was wet, then it seemed like it cut, like it was sharpening the knife at 8K. And I immediately was like, holy shit, I could see a difference and it took knives to like another level. So I have not used, I've used this Tanaka and it took it to another level too. So even though we have that one, we have the brand new one and we'll see what we can do with that. But I'm gonna show you a knife that's already sharp and uh, it, it's missing like the like 
El Supremo like level. So we'll see if we can get it there. Okay. All right. So we got that bad boy saturated in there. You see that, right? Can you see those lines? See the load on that. <clears throat> so again, if it gets too loaded up, then I'm not. I'm kind of floating on top of the uh, the 8K surface, and so I need to clean it. 8,000 is already pretty fine, but I need that texture on there. strokes guys I don't know if you're doing short stuff that dishes it out but like full strokes so how long do you go I mean on 8k I'm not making a burr you know so I mean you're polishing you know I mean look at it every once in a while I mean the thing is just ridiculously shiny you know So, let's do the other side. Now, when, you, when you're done making this like laser edge, you would think it'd be like perfectly aligned, but that's actually not gonna be the case. You guys have probably all seen a barber with uh, his leather strop and a straight razor, but you've gotta realize you created a foil edge and that foil edge can roll over and be like not perfectly aligned. And so a barber who sanitizes his straight razor, he still needs to realign the blade so he'll move it back and forth on the leather strop. <clears throat> now, earlier when we were on the 1000, so let's say we we're on the 220, the 400, and the 1000, and we're sharpening, then burrs matter. <clears throat> so, um, once we got the, once we put on the 3000, we're like starting to polish <coughs> slash deburr. So if I went back and forth and did no forward strokes like I did on a thousand, I would still feel the burr wiggling. And so we would still be trying to line up the, the end. We would still drag it across to, to try to get the, the wire off. But then at, a, at some point, the knife's edge is like out of line and so we're going to put it on leather to really make the little edgy teeth there's the little edges <clears throat> become crazy clean <clears throat> so the fact that they're still black coming off the knife says that there's still stuff to remove from the knife. Now, I'm lucky I have a white stone. Uh, I have like a, a contrast to tell me if I had a black stone, I wouldn't see all this. So I think there's definitely an advantage to having color. Maybe they were smarter than me and they already knew that. So we just put a damn 8,000 grit polish on this knife. So let's do some edge leading strokes, okay? So.
notice I'm focused, I'm being very deliberate. I mean, these are the last strokes, you know, so they actually need to count. Okay, so we did a lot of edge leading. <coughs> Okay, 10,000, right? That's what I'm saying, 10,000. So, you, let's do it. Let's see what we can get. We're just take a shitty knife as far as we can take it. You wanted it, you got it, Toyota. Um, yeah, these are expensive. Yeah, I didn't have a thousand dollars. This one was half that. Um, so it doesn't fit all the way to the back of my bridge. So it might rock back and forth. I might have to come up with a solution for that. But um, first time use, shitty knife, expensive stone. Let's go. So the first thing I'll tell you about the Nakayama hard as hell. I mean, it is slick and hard. Um, there's a little bit of a slurry. The shortness is not bothering the, 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 sh the sharpening. I don't, I'm not worried about addition because the damn stone is so hard. So in natural stones, they rate them from one to five. I mean, some people even put like five plus, plus, plus. Well, this is definitely as hard as a stone as I ever, even this other Nakayama is equally hard. Um, they're slightly different in color. This one's wider, that one's longer and thinner. That one is supposed to be closer to Eight nine. This is supposed to be closer to nine ten. So we just jumped right to that. So again, polishing the edge on a shitty knife with scratches all over it. The edge will be beautiful. You're probably thinking, like, how am I going to do that? Well, I'm almost done. <sighs> so, you know, the last thing we're going to do is edge leading. So we're getting those, those lines, those, those teeth. And this is a super hard knife. I mean, super hard stone. I don't know if I could cut this stone if I wanted to. Now, Suhiro makes a 30,000 grit, and there's a guy in the forums that makes knives sharper than I have. <laughs> he said it wasn't a 30,000. Um, he said 10,000 was enough, so this would be our 10,000 equivalent. I don't know that I'll get his sharp with this knife. So one of the things I did not do, you saw me, I literally took it out of the box. I did not flatten this stone. It might need to be flattened. Um, we're just gonna assume that we're good. I'm sure I'll hear some comments about that. Um, I am going to be sealing my stones. It was recommended to me that my natural stones are a large investment, that the rock is layered, and that water will cause the layers to break. I will be listening to people who know more than me the definition of an ask 
pole as a person who asks questions and then listens to none of the advice. I'm not going to do that. I'm not saying that we always all listen, but I knew nothing about Japanese homes. <laughs> so, um, okay. So what's the last thing we gotta do here? <clears throat> so we're gonna do two cut tests. One is off of that stone, and then we'll do one with leather. So let's see if we got to paper towel cutting with a shitty knife and good stones. So it wasn't the smoothest cut, meaning like I felt like it took a second, but we did cut a paper towel with the, you know, on the Nakayama. That felt more like a tear. That was a cut. All right, so let's, <clears throat> Let's get some leather. <clears throat> so this is a Bob Kramer leather strop. I do not, not know what kind of leather it is. It's kind of smooth. There is some residual. Well, I don't know if you can see it in the light, but there are some residual, probably hardly any left on there, but there are some residual <clears throat> um, 0.25 micron diamond paste. <clears throat> I think this was supposed to be like 96,000 grit. So when we're doing the stropping technique, remember just a minute ago we did edge forward to make sure that the end of the knife grains, if you can hear that, <clears throat> where all the teeth in this were like gone. <clears throat> so now we're going to go edge towards me, pushing towards you. So we're going to go across the leather and up. I'm going to turn the knife over. Now I can start the tip or the heel and go. Now I could go heat like tip. Now the angle of the knife is normally stropped at the angle of the sharpening. Um, some people that I absolutely love, people are other people are not a fan. I'm sorry. I'm a fan. So there's a company called Knife Grinders. They're out of Australia. They publish a book on sharpening. They do scientific testing. <clears throat> and they actually have this dropping angle per steel. So if you're using, say, blue steel, it might say the dropping angle should be negative four degrees to the angle you sharpened at it. But if it's another steel, it might be negative one or plus one. Um, so then you would have to make, you know, choice, you know, if you knew that. They're doing in absolutes because they actually clamp a clamp to the knife to set the angle to absolutely fixed. Um, and they've got a knife sharper than I've ever seen, which was, you know, 39 on the best. Um, and they even have a, a really good video on stropping where they take knives and don't sharpen them and they just put them on leather. And one of the things that they have is their leather is actually not the skin of a kangaroo, but the tail of a kangaroo. And it's got a certain crosshair structure that really helps to pull the burr off. Unfortunately, right now you cannot get the kangaroo burr in mean, the kangaroo strop because of the Australian fires. Either kangaroos are dead or, anyway, you can't find a damn kangaroo's tail. We're not gonna kill the animal for the tail, we better not be. But if we have an animal that dies and we can gather the tail, well, they've all died or they're endangered or Something's going on over. So this feels pretty smooth. So if we can't cut a paper towel, we'll cut a tomato. I think I see one tomato over there. See my vase? Like seriously? This is a shitty knife. Did I tell you? This is a fucking shitty knife. Hey, that one wasn't too good. So we had one really great one, but you know, 
cracks me up is the edge was probably so damn sharp on the first one and then it got dull instantly on paper top. Believe it or not, that could probably happen. So that's a tear. That's more of a tear. So we got one really good one. So, okay. So that's all we got out of that. I was, I was shocked. I did not expect that. <laughs> um, let's cut a tomato. This is my really cheap knife. So we got it like paper thin tomato sharp, um, $12 knife. That is crazy thin. Okay, so this is a long ass video. So we're gonna call it quits. I got all the other knives out. I'll probably shoot another video and just load it separately. And that'll be me trying to get paper ripped towel, like amazing with a really good knife.